Thank you, thank you. Um, okay, so welcome to MySQL, uh, MySQL 8, the latest version, okay? If you've heard of anything MySQL, there's been being some big changes, okay? Uh, from versions 5.5, 5, 5, 6, 5, 7, and there's a jump to 8.0. Uh, why the jump? Because there's big changes internally, and um, let's have a quick look at that, okay? Safe Harbor Statement, this is my license to lie, okay? As um, you might have seen before, um, if it's not going GA, we may mention it's uh, in a beta phase or development milestone or release candidate, but um, when it's GA, it's GA, okay? So um, don't worry if we mention things that are, that are still being developed. In fact, if you want to talk more about things that are being developed, you want to help inf influence our roadmap in the room today, we have a collection of uh, MySQL developers, uh, XDev API, Replication, uh, you name it, it's there here almost. And if not, we can get you in contact with the people who you need to talk to. So um, please don't be scared, um, just ask, hands up, and we'll try and answer a question. Okay, the quick uh, agenda here, MySQL 8, what is it, what's new? Uh, the Enterprise Edition, just in case you didn't know what it is. MySQL Cluster, won't go too long into that one, but um, just so you're aware of it. And what is MySQL support? Obviously through Oracle, uh, through the Oracle support. But, um, but what are we going to be focused on? Um, it's web, it's cloud, you know MySQL probably, you've heard it, you know, as we were talking about before, LAMP stacks, you know, different uh, solutions based around a database, and then open source, it is MySQL. Uh, or versions of MySQL, come back to MySQL, it's always, they're always better, um, but, and it's, it's all, all us, it's all engineered by us, for us, and for you, obviously, in the community. MySQL is the world's most popular open source database, okay? Uh, leading database for web applications, so obviously cloud, integrated with Hadoop and big data. And it's like, you know, it's, it's another RDBMS out there, but you've probably used it without even knowing. Uh, have you ever, anyone played Candy Crush here? Yeah? You go on, you've all played Candy Crush, surely. Uh, something similar, you've all gone through PayPal, or you've uh, gone on to, I don't know, AliExpress or whatever. Then you've used, uh, you know, P-Interest and things like that. You've used MySQL without knowing it. For example, in the middle here, you can see the naming there. We've got the cloud at the top right, top left, social, social media, uh, e-commerce, finance. Uh, all of these people are using MySQL in the background without you knowing it. You paid using Visa, you've used MySQL. And looking about e-commerce, Netflix, Uber, they're all using MySQL there, okay? So like I said, we've come from 5.7 up into uh, 8. Uh, what have we done in the meantime? Uh, so well, 5.7 was like, you know, better performance, a lot of uh, enhancements in replication, change within the cost model, uh, optimizer model there with the costs, JSON support, JSON data types in 5.7, uh, more highly, a fo big focus on security, allowing us to be much more secure by default without having to do anything. And then on top of that, more options around security. Uh, the system performance schemas, which allows us to go deeper into our MySQL instance, see what's happening, um, have, it, have all of that information around performance more digestible. And GIS, for those spatial needs, okay? But then we move from 5.7 towards 8.0, and in the meantime, we've got group replication, which is like the replication scenario internally. It's there. You just have to activate it. But um, that group replication with router and shell means that we've got our InnoDB cluster. But that's moving towards MySQL 8. It's obviously always, we're constantly improving now. And there's a slight change in the features within MySQL now from 8.0 onwards. Uh, we've got each 8.0 release comes out with new features, new options. We want to get things quicker to you. So you can obviously use them, you, you have your environments, you know, making the most of these new functionalities. Uh, better performance, no doc, no SQL. So we've got SQL, my SQL, but it's no SQL as well now, the document store. Don't have to worry about schemas, about creating tables. We're writing now, you know, using JavaScript straight into MySQL, and you don't even know it. The developers don't need to know SQL. So we've got JSON, we've got common table expressions. We're focused more around developers now in 8.0, more new features around you know, maybe our analytical needs or querying options there. Window functions, ranging, we'll see this in more detail in a second. The data dictionary behind the scenes. We're thinking cloud, we're thinking we don't have access now to the operating system. So many people have gone to the cloud. Well, let's make it easier. Make, and also at the same time, make it secure. 
Okay, so the data dictionary means InnoDB, no my ISO. Um, think more things are in the InnoDB that obviously makes it um, more improvements and stuff within that. Replication, like I said before, roles. Again, security, making privileges and permissions or grouping up within roles. Something that's been wait, you know, you've been waiting for for a long time. Unicode changes, GIS ad additions as well, different functionalities about measuring, you know, different play, different spheres and everything. So it's a giant leap from my, uh, as it says there, MySQL 8. One of the key things is like, you know, the SQL 92, and we've got, you know, the, the window functions and common table expressions is a key thing there to move towards a standardization. So these are things that have been included now. For those of you who may have seen the other se session before, you, this looks familiar, but um, for those of you who haven't, this is the steps of the versions we've been using. Okay, so from 5.1, 5.5, 5.6, Big change in 8.0. Change of the numbering means it's a big change. We can store emojis in MySQL now if you want to. Okay? May sound good, may, why not? So your application doesn't have to. Okay, you don't have to worry about that one. The Unicode characters are there. Developer first, we've got hybrid data model and data access APIs. Like we said, the document store. What are we doing here? I'm, I want to carry on using my relational database, but at the same time use NoSQL. Okay? Import those, that data. Data driven, it's a database. Obviously, we're focused around data. Uh, data analysis, like I said, common table, table expressions and window functions will allow us to do more, less code, and more efficiently. And scalable, like I said, uh, InnoDB's uh, cluster, the options about replication, and scalability. And uh, with the latest new features like MySQL clone, we can just clone a MySQL instance with this plugin, and it's so much easier. You don't have to go away, think about MySQL dump, think about the server, think about backups, think about snapshots. You can do that from within MySQL now. Like we said, high, high availability. Well, you know, we've got 99%. We've got a master-slave replication. That's okay. It's working. You know, we've got a backup. We may have to do manual processes to, to switch over to our slave, see what situation, where is the master. We can automate those with an automated failover script, you know, make use of that, depending on the type of failover. If we want to go to, you know, maybe DRBD or other OS and vendors, you know, active passive solutions, you know, maybe we're more happier in there with that sense, increasing the 99.99%. But then, like we say, you want to go something more automated, um, seamless to your application, use group replication in ODB cluster and make it a whole lot easier. We'll look at MySQL cluster later on. But um, what replication? I mean, talking about replication, do you know the scenarios you can do? Is it really clear what you can do with the MySQL? Well, the single replication, have a master, have a single slave. That's okay. That's a good way to start. Have a chain. So that, that, that first one there is a like master and a slave, but this, the one at the top there says master and a slave, and that slave at the same time is a master to another slave. So I've got two layers of slaves there. Multi-master or circular replication. Maybe something I want to have. That's what I need. I want to write in both both data centers or do both um, both my instances, or just you know write different data, but make sure I have copies of that replicating across. Multiple slaves, a multi-master as well as slaves of each one of these, a circular replication whereby obviously I know what I'm doing here and I'm making the checks so that I'm not you know deleting my rows out here and everything, or multi-source, which was new in five seven by saying I've got different masters but I only want one consolidated slave. And I have different replication channels. I replicate down into one. Again, we need to know what, what each master is doing and control the replication channels there or filter out dynamically if we want to. But all of this is feasible, no problem. If we want to look at more into detail about the multi-source, um, like I said, it's the different channels working down from one uh, slave. Again, we need to be careful. It's like if I have uh, three, five, ten masters, uh, I think in the code, and correct me here, guys, if, if I think there's a kind of written hard-coded max of 255 masters, but if you want to un uh, compile that and put a zero at the end, you can do so. But be wary. Your slave is as strong as it is. You have one slave. Maybe you want to make that a powerful slave, or even, you know, it's going to be 10 times, 100 times the, all the masters. Or what data am I bringing down from my master? Is it just one table? Just one schema? Or is it everything? You know, you, you can do that however you want. So that's multi-source replication. 
And as I say, the dynamic replication filters there will allow us to choose. Maybe you've got two different sites and you want to replicate, you know, the same data or similar data, different tables. It's up to you, it's up to you. Now, everybody's heard of, yeah, it's synchronous replication, it's always there, it's constantly, you know, no problem there. Careful, careful. If they say, okay, well, how synchronous is synchronous? What happens when I have a network outage? Okay, well, let's be, let's be fair. We're asynchron asynchronous first, okay? Master produces the bin log. That bin log is then read by the slave and applied. There's points there where that can fail. Semi-synchronous? Yeah, it was there in 5.5. It's been you know, seriously improved in 5.7. So obviously we can control the, the granularity, the configuration of how many slaves acknowledge and therefore give that control back to the master. But that we have a semi-synchronous. Okay, so, you know, being fair here, being clear, asynchronous, semi-synchronous. And what is synchronous? I write in two places at the same time. What we call MySQL cluster. Okay? That's kind of like the two-phase comet. I will write in my, my instance. And if I don't, if one of the nodes goes down when it comes back up, it will write that row. Okay? So at the end of the day, it says, seriously, the master waits for changes to be applied on all slaves. Now, what, like we say in, in NODB cluster, and I hopefully it's, here it is, it's virtually synchronous. Uh, there, ooh, no, I'm, going too, I'm going too fast. So it's, we call it virtually synchronous. Why? We have the eventual consistency model, but at the same time we can choose if it's eventual or before, before and after, before a failure, you know, or after. I want to do my, my, my updates, my inserts. We can choose the level of consistency there. So we can be very aggressive. Again, if we're very aggressive, we'll be causing blocks across our cluster. Or we can be the eventual, say, majority. When two of our, my three nodes get this uh, row, then I'll make sure that if the other one gets it, and if it doesn't, it will be kicked out. So that, you know, we can, we can choose that granularity, which is quite you know, unique within a database system, whether it's global or per transaction. Like I say, highly configurable. With the MySQL router, which is like, you know, the application has the MySQL router process that is local to it, and it says, send this to localhost 3306. And that is really router. Router says, yeah, don't worry. I know this is a cluster. This is a master, a primary master cluster, or it's a multi-master cluster. I'll send the data there. But the application just says, send it to localhost 3306. Shell, we will be changing things there, modifying it, or adding instances, cloning, whatever we want to do, or fixing maybe outages, or just anal an analyzing the situation. We can do that from Shell. And at the same time, we could run those commands via SQL within our instances. The metadata is kept within each instance. Okay? But like I say, high availability becomes a core first-class feature of MySQL, because group replication is in MySQL. It's there to so use it, if you want to, of course. You don't have to. The goals, like I said, it's all, 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 all MySQL, it's all everything there. It's like, obviously, um, we can have it on any platform we want to, on Solaris, on Windows, as well as, obviously, Linux. Um, you can have your MySQL server instances on Linux, but you can have your router on, on Windows if you want to, or your shell. It's up to you. We kind of, you know, it's easier if you keep it all on one Linux or one flight on one platform. Um, Easy to use, MySQL Shell is really in the utilities, like, um, well, the admin API itself, it's like built in, You've got everything there you need to use to make your life easier. Uh, flexible modern, we've got uh, SQL and NoSQL, okay, like we were saying, the document store, the ease of writing within Shell or via the XDev API, the, um, the option of Python, JavaScript, as well as SQL. A developer friendly, like I say, um, and sharded clusters. You know, depending on what we're doing, we can write out re oh, so do our shards of our read nodes, create even slaves of our InnoDB cluster, so we can scale out there. And this is a kind of an example of how fast can I grow or the scalability options I have with MySQL. Um, there, are, there are companies like Booking, Booking.com, ring a bell maybe. Um, they have lots of replica sets. Uh, different parts of the business use InnoDB cluster, different parts using NDB cluster. So they, you know, they're depending on what they want to do, they'll send you, what, when do you write when you're in a uh, hotel reservation system? Or when you put your, press, your credit card payments in or when you say, that's the one I want. But otherwise you're reading. So obviously you're reading, you know, people, they tell you, just five people are looking at this hotel in the past hour. 
they're giving you out the updates, but it's the last hour. It's not the last millisecond, is it? You don't have to have that data always the real time last copy. So it's depending on where you're looking, it'll say, you know, people have been here. You know, this is the data. It's maybe not totally synchronous with all the rest of the, the replica sets or the nodes. Depends what your, your application needs. Going back to uh, Shell, okay, um, like I say, by default, we'll open up in a JavaScript session, okay, so dba.help to see all of our options, what we can do, what we can execute within our sessions connected to the instance or to the cluster, okay, so we can create, validate, configure, get cluster info, modify, and much more, and one of those that's missing there is clone or even provision an instance within my cluster when I'm creating it. My router process, which is, at the end of the day, my, my proxying, I'm getting in there, I've got options to, you know, to waiting, to, to, you know, to put percentage waiting, or to do, do round robin, or configure it, hard coding, per application, per application server, or web server. So maybe I want to put my MySQL router configuration to have the intelligence of the cluster, or not. Or have two processors running in the same system, or five, or whatever I want. Totally configurable. Supports multi-master and single primary. Again, within the shell option, we can move between single primary clusters to multi-master and back again. So it depends on what we want to do. Group replication. Like I said, this is the part. This is the slide I was looking for earlier. It says it's virtually synchronous for replication. And again, there's the consistency there. We can control that. So by default, it's eventual. But you know, let me know what you want. You know, let's configure it however we see fit. Okay. To do, do, do automate operation, conflict de detection and resolution, you know, first commit win wins, therefore the code what we're writing, our application will obviously have to see, if we have a multi-master, say, well, the first one's committed, so the other one says, I'm going to update the same row. It's like, well, you're going to do a rollback. Obviously, our application needs to understand that and take actions upon that. Group membership and management and reconfiguration, when there's a split brain scenario or when, you know, there's, we're losing contact, you know, that's reconfigured. We can rejoin that instance depending on, obviously, the failure, if it's network or if it's disk or whatever. That's up to us. So that was like the InnoDB cluster, the HA part of MySQL 8. Uh, My, uh, MySQL Workbench 8, of course. When we, bring, uh, when we brought out MySQL 8, everything else follows suit. So we've got the new versions of, of Workbench, new versions of Enterprise Monitor, new versions of, um, of Enterprise Backup, and again, Workbench, okay? So we've got the performance dashboard. It's a quick summary of the performance schema data, the sys schema, of what's happening since this instance has been started up. It's not Enterprise Monitor. It's got, the life, for the life of the instance, what's working here. We've got visual explain plans. We can, you know, view what's happened, what, what's happening with our queries, see what's full scans or nested loops or, you know, what's happening there. Migration. You want to migrate from Access to MySQL? Yeah, we can do that now. You still want to use your, you know, um, the data migration wizard to migrate from SQL Server, Sybase, Postgres? Yeah, you can migrate the data through. Doesn't migrate the code. We can give you some ideas on that one if you want to, but um, you know, we can migrate the data no problem there. Who uses Windows here? I'm not in the best place to ask that question. I know. But um, I'm sure some of you got Windows environments, all right? And or your customers, your users, or your environments have Windows. So you, I know you can't get away from it. But MySQL and Windows, we have a suite of products for that. So it's not like saying, okay, yeah, we're MySQL. We're only dedicated to Linux. You only want things to work on Linux. You don't want it to work on Windows. Microsoft's a bad guy. No, we know that. Uh, the, the majority, if not 100%, or at least 80%, I think it is, of all MySQL deployments start on Windows. You start developing on your PC, and your PC just happens to be Windows. What have we got? We've got the installer for Windows that allows you to either have everything packaged in or you download as you see fit across the internet. For Workbench, the migration wizard, Visual Studio, MySQL for Excel. You want to connect Excel into MySQL via ODBC. A MySQL notifier for Windows. So if you get your alerts popping up in your Windows uh, tray, so you know what's happening to, to MySQL. Connector for Net or ODBC. You know, what, what are you missing from, from Windows, for, for Microsoft in, there, in that sense? We've got it all. And if we're missing anything, let us know. Document store. You've got MySQL, you've got your relational tables, your foreign keys, you know that. It's an RDBMS, okay? But what about now? You've got no SQL. The JSON data type that came out in 5.7 was preparing us for this. But in 8.0, we now have no SQL usage through the XDEV API. 
MySQL shell, getting into MySQL. So you're writing SQL and in the same session changing to JavaScript, changing to Python, changing back to SQL, or even within JavaScript. I want to send SQL commands because it's I, I do know those parts. Well, without without even changing into the SQL mode, you can write your SQL. Okay, for some things, or just carry on writing in JavaScript. Okay, that's document store. It's a schemaless uh, JSON collection to get rid of all your mongos. Go on, get rid of them. As I say, schemaless, rapid prototyping API, document model transactions, operations is performance management, robust. It's, it's, it's MySQL. It works. You know it works. And the business owner, I don't lose them in my data. I've got acid transactions. You know, all my data's in there. And again, at the end of the day, it's a table, okay, a key value, and I can even combine in one table, or what we took, call a collection, all my documents, all my rows. So I've got my key value message, my key value solution, with my relational model being the, the, taking from the attributes of my, you know, my JSON data, my, my values, into a relational model. So I've got columns in the same table as my NoSQL, feeding from the JSON data type. So when I do my SQL queries on that same table, I have that working. Hybrid, table. Okay. Obviously, at the end of the day, it's MySQL. It's a table. But use it however you see fit. Just in case it wasn't clear, classic scenario, MySQL connectors, going in through the SQL API standard protocol, 3306, into my tables, select star from. That's okay, fine. But then we've got MySQL shell or whatever crowd on an SQL API you may have there going through the X protocol, 33060, into our JSON collections. First name, last name, city. What are we going to take out here? Okay, JSON. Again, MySQL shell, we used it in InnoDB cluster to create our cluster. But at the same time, like I said, we're going from the left here. You can see JavaScript, Python, SQL within the same session or you know, even within different parts of it. Uh, you've got the SQL uh, command line interface. We're using InnoDB cluster. We've got our XDev API. We've got an upgrade checker that takes us from 5.7 to 8.0. Gives us all the information. What's happening in my instance? Is 5.7 OK to go to 8? Yes, no. This is what you need to change. Have a look into the detail there. Obviously, it's a command line, so we can use Bax execution on it and get our output formats in different ways. You know, table, JSON, tab. We can change the prompt there in different pretty colors if we want to, if that's useful for you and auto-completion and command history. So that's kind of a quick overview of things new in 8.0. There are a lot more, okay? Like I say, there's so many different things, different releases coming out. So, you know, if you want to more, know more detail what's new in 8.0.17 or what will be new in 8.0.18, let us know. You know, it's, it's all on the web on muscular.com. The brief uh, enterprise edition, if you're using community, why should I go to enterprise? Why should I start paying? It's up to you if you have the money pay. If you don't, you can't. It's simple as that. But if you want to go to enterprise or what's in enterprise, convince me. Show me why I should go. Three main areas. Support, reactive and proactive, tooling. You've got enterprise monitor, enterprise backup, and workbench, the enterprise edition with graphical interface there. So we've got you know three different tools there as well as obviously the, the added uh, advanced features which would be a scalability with the thread pool plugin, a high availability of solutions, security, a whole load of solutions around security, uh, encryption, TDE data masking, around, you know, making sure we're safe with our data there, encrypting the columns within the tables or at rest, as well as firewall, impeding SQL injection. So what's the difference? Do you really know the difference between community and enterprise? Well, we talked about this earlier, but um, you know, I want to go into it a little bit more detail. You've got community, and say, you okay, go, I want support. I'm not sure if I want enterprise or not, but I want support. It's all supported, okay? But everything in server and the community version is standard functionality, partition, replication, high availability, high availability, storage engine, utilities, SQL, no SQL, official documentation. That, that's all in community. It's there for you to use. Do it now. You've got it. Free. All right? Open source. Connectors as well. You've got the net, J, you know, Python. They're all community. We've seen this before, but again, it's the difference here of, okay, where do I get the software? How do I know which is one or the other? You will see, obviously, community or commercial. Or advanced, that doesn't sound too community to me, if you're using MySQL advanced software, okay? There'll be a clear distinction there of which one we're using. 
Where did I get it from? I can't remember. I got it from mysquare.com. It's going to be community. Because if you went to e-delivery Oracle com, com Oracle, hmm, that sounds like I've paid for something, doesn't it? Then therefore you'll be you know, enterprise edition. Or you're testing it. Um, like I say, product pack, MySQL database, enterprise embedded, depending on your usage. I'm a customer, I have my, my environment, my single MySQL instance installed in my PC. And I want support and I want tools. I want the enterprise edition. Or I'm an ISV or an OEM and I'm embedding, I'm creating an application, a solution. I don't want my customer, my users to know I'm using any database at all. It's completely black box and you'll be using embedded, all right? Install packages. Like I said before, um, it says you can do it install the way you want. You can get the source code and do it your way if you want. But there are RPMs, MSIs, tables, dot debs, you know, or you know for Mac and everything. Compressed tables. I may want just to open it up as a you know runtime environment as, as if it were, or just you know tar and unzip. But you can do that as well. Quick. Um, Slides on you know the tools or the solution within the enterprise is uh, enterprise monitor for queries, uh, performance, uh, activity, notifications, forwarding on, controlling what's happening, security, and everything within the environment. It's very simple to set up. Comes with a Tomcat, bundled MySQL, and you're up and running in 10, 15 minutes. It really is that simple. Okay. Yes, it's called Enterprise Monitor, and yes, you can monitor community instances. No, you don't need to pay for the Enterprise Monitor server apart. How many servers do you want to go for on enterprise? And that's it. It's cloud friendly. You don't have to have agents. There is an agent, but it's, it's user password and connectivity. So if you have instances in the cloud where you can't install software, there's no problem. You can monitor those community instances in the cloud if you want to. A quick look at the dashboard there. That's what you'd see when you first go in. And you can configure this, refresh rates and stuff like that. It's very, very simple. One of the key focus points on the Enterprise Monitor is the um, query analysis. Look at the what's happened in the last day, but I want to focus on a specific time frame. I want to go into this deep drive, uh, drill down, and look into the queries that happen from you know five past ten to to ten past ten, and see what full scans were happening in that point, or what inde what indexes weren't being used for what queries. Very simple. Quality of service is like a big, a quick red or green. You'll see that in the middle there. We're saying one or zero. It's good. It's bad. Very simple to see. And when we click on the query, we'd see you know, the explain plans for that query, the historical graphics, and everything like that. Replication draws a topology there. Very nice to see. And you can obviously see the lags and that. You've got all the alerts and stuff. I'm rushing a bit because I know time's of an essence. Uh, groups, we call them advisors. It's the groups of notifications, groups of uh, alerts we have to let us know, you know what's happening. If you don't know how, what to look at in MySQL and you're new to MySQL, Enterprise Monitor is a good way to learn as well. It's a good way to say, what's this? What do I have to do? Where's the documentation for this? Every alert has links to the documentation, explains how it got to that, tells you what's good, what's bad, and how to improve it or change it. Gives you that information. For cluster as well, for NDB clusters, more uh, information there. Topology drawing there, you know, what's my MySQL Ds, my data nodes, my NDBM management nodes. Backup, okay, that was monitor, but then you say, okay, well, I'm running backups. And like I said, um, I said in the other session we had earlier on, that um, you may be doing a MySQL dump, takes you four hours, you want to take a consistent view. To take a consistent view takes means transaction blocking and therefore keeping a consistent read lock on that file, it takes a long time. But with an online backup from Enterprise Backup, it will take much less. Now, this is an example scenario. Test it. You get 30 days to use the Enterprise software. You can go away and test this and use it. Have a look at it and say, how long does my dump take now? Now I want to do a backup. It will take minutes or even seconds. I had one customer said, the MySQL Enterprise backup is like um, much faster than the dump I was doing. I'm going to take a full backup every half an hour. I said, well, why do you do that? It's like, you know, just take a, one backup a day and do incrementals. He said, it takes 20 seconds now instead of, you know, the two hours it took before. But it was up to you. It's up to you. But again, test it in your scenario and the amount of data you may have, wherever you are, and it's, it's going to be faster than any export in that sense. And then the restore, of course. You have, don't have to recreate the instance. And there's different options. Obviously, we can send backups to cloud, to S3 or, or OCI, or Oracle OCI. Incremental backups, point-in-time recovery, of course. 
uh, advanced compression encryption, we were on a data safe. Uh, backup to tapes, you know, different solutions there. Validation, optimistic backups, and obviously take my backup from Windows, restore into Linux, it's completely seamless there. And of course, we have enterprise backup, we have enterprise monitor, we want to monitor them both. We can do that from within enterprise monitor. Got different alerts there. Again, all of these alerts we can adjust, we can make them fit our needs, what we know of my MySQL environment. So maybe 95 is, is acceptable for me for whatever threshold. I want to push it to 97. Change it. Or create your own group of you know, advisors. It's like, I need to have a specific users created here, and if they're not, send me alerts, you know, who's deleted them. Workbench, okay, like you're using the community edition, you're using work, uh, Workbench uh, for free there, whatever, no problem. But then maybe you want to go to the Enterprise Edition with the different um, options around um, data migration or, you know, is it auditing, uh, firewall and backup, okay? Auditing, you know, activate auditing, which is an enterprise feature. So we've activated that. We're auditing specific parts of our table, columns, updates, inserts, deletes, for whatever. Again, all of those uh, filters we can apply. And we're controlling here through Workbench, the enterprise. We'll run our backups. Run those with uh, Enterprise Workbench as well. Next, next, next. Very simple there. You're an Oracle customer and you've got Oracle databases. Well, you've also got Enterprise Manager. <clears throat> There's an, a plugin for MySQL as well. You can get a view of your platform, your MySQL platform there as well. Scalability. There's something called Threadpool. It could be something useful to you for maybe you know, growing with the same hardware, the same CPU, same memory being more efficient internally, hierarchies, and creating a pool of connective connections within our MySQL server. Test it, see if it works. Different groups, round robbing, reusable threads. You know, it would be more efficient with our CPUs and our slots. Security, there's a whole load of stuff around security, okay? Um, obviously, we're assessing with the monitor, authentication, firewall encryption, data masking. Uh, detecting with auditing and recover with HA and backup. There's a, there's a sessions you know, on each one of these topics. If you want to know more, let me know. Uh, there are things um, recorded online as well, so we can go into detail there. But for you, if you're worried about GDPR, let us know. Again, you know, more things around security, encryption, public key, asymmetric cryptography even, uh, key management, public and private keys, and verified data there, different layers. The firewall, SQL injection, denial of service, we want to make sure the queries that are run within the MySQL instance are the queries we know. If they're not, give us alerts, block them, or even learn, depending on what, what mode we're in. We can control that. It's a white list of SQL, okay? And again, um, just going back here. On the top right, you'll see the enterprise firewall, part of enterprise monitor that's alerting of what's happening within firewall there. That's an example where Somebody's added the or one equals one, or that's, that will be blocked by firewall. Audit, like I say, it's logging the, of the you know, connections, queries, within the queries, what objects, what type of queries, we can fine tune that one. And generate XML based or JSON based audit stream there. This is an example of how you quickly install it and just get the information out of that. Authentication, what authentication do you need? It's there for you. External authentication, Windows Active Directory, maybe. It's up to you. Data masking. What type of masking do you need? Do you need it automatically? Do you need it internally? Do you need to generate um, random data for your non-production environments? Or do you need to protect credit cards or social security numbers? Different algorithms there. It's all up there for you. Okay. Docker. Anyone using Docker here? because there are Docker images with a MySQL community, some older versions of Enterprise. I'm not sure how updated that is quite uh, recently. I haven't had a look, but, um, but you know, MySQL is for Docker. There are our images. You've got, obviously, Docker's versions, but they're also ours. Okay, there was an um, Enterprise edition there for you. And not just, um, and not just MySQL server. You've got you know, MySQL InnoDB cluster and NDB cluster as well. So if you want to use that within Docker, yeah, we've got images for that one and a step-by-step -step of how-tos as well. Got Oracle Container Registry as well, as well as Docker. We even got a lab release of uh, MySQL Operator for Kubernetes, for those of you who want to deploy in Adobe clusters. Next, 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 very easily with Kubernetes. We have an operator there as well. Okay. Quickly around cluster. MySQL cluster is not MySQL server in a cluster. And this will kind of be like a, a, an overview of what it is. It's, um, uh, it's an in-memory, real-time,
database. That's where our data is, it's in memory. And then when we stop the cluster, it'll be checkpointed down to disk, so it's not as if it disappears, it won't disappear. Or if parts of our architecture fails, then obviously when we bring those parts up again, it'll be back in memory, no problem there, okay? So it's constantly being checkpointed down into disk. So really it's an in-memory, real-time, because all the memory and data in memory is real-time. Uh, it's auto-sharding multi-master. We write, we can have 256 components of, my, of a MySQL cluster. What does that mean? 48 data nodes, uh, two or three um, uh, arbitrators, managers, and the rest, you know, 208, 206 uh, SQL nodes or API nodes. So all those, those you're writing into at the same time, or it's a C program, you're writing down into your data. All masters, same data, sharded underneath, okay, with the data nodes. Hence, 99.999% availability. So there's no sharing here, there's no failover. It's no single point of failure. Self-healing online, obviously self-healing depending on what. You can't blow it all up and expect it to come out of the, the, you know, the ashes. It's not a phoenix, but uh, online operations as well. Like I say, real time. Uh, in the latest versions of uh, Cluster, you've also got disk database tables as well. It allows you to not only have things always in memory, but also down underneath on, on the disk. So depending on what you want to do, you can mix and match. Uh, one thing, like I said, no, I'll just go through this and go back to a point there. SQL, no SQL, it's no SQL, it's uh, writing in C, we don't have to write SQL if you don't want to. It's community, and there's a community commercial, the NDB carrier grade edition, commodity hardware, manager monitoring tools. But what I wanted to go back to is like, uh, when we're talking cluster, this is a conversation aside. We sit down, we talk about this, and as I said before, I will tell you whether you need cluster or not, and I will tell you probably not before you tell you you will, because it's not simple to go into. It's a learning curve, it's a different architecture, different type of solution, so you know, it's something to be taken seriously. Hence, if we need two things in cluster, we need memory and we need network. There's an option that says diskless. We can have an NDB cluster that says diskless equals true. So I don't really need disk if you don't have to have it. But I do need memory, I do need a network, okay? So to, given that, we're looking at different solutions. These people use cluster and they say, okay, well, what, what for? Well, different parts of the online gaming, telcos, you know, different solutions. But one of those, for example, is Playful Play, and they used just cluster for uh, logging, points, and um, password. Just a cache, just a caching system. So when I go in, Okay, I've got, I've got a user. As a, um, authentication as well, different telco environments. Just authenticating the user. Then once I'm in, gone through my cluster system, then I'm into you know, the standard MySQL, you know, replicas or shards or whatever I want. Again, it's in memory, so depending on what you want to do, it's up to you. That's the architecture. The data, no the data is underneath at the data layer, in the data nodes, in memory. And MySQL is up with uh, Node.js, Memcache, Java, Apache, C. That's where our code is, or our, you know, we're executing. So you don't always have to have lots of MySQL D processes, the SQL nodes. We grow online, we can add the different layers independently, and that's automatic within the sharding, with the scalability there. And if we lose everything in the middle of the application layer except one MySQL, and if we lose a half of our data center at the data layer, there's no problem there. We still have other copy of data. That's a MySQL cluster. Okay, I don't know if you've recognized that, but it's, um, it's an old photo. Okay, but it's two Raspberry Pis uh, with NDBs uh, installed in there. You've got the network, you've got the SD card as the, the, the disk, okay? And it's like, okay, right, it's, it's not a production usage, of course, but I thought it would be a good photo to put in here to show, show you where we can go. I've not seen those in production, <laughs> all right? But um, it can be done. So it doesn't have to be a massive you know, servers or solutions. Geographic replication built in, okay, all the functions are there, so we can determine, create two clusters that have obviously, you know, replicating data, multi-master, uh, within obviously the data nodes and SQL nodes they have internally. So that's also built in. So we can scale, we're evolving with our environments of code, backup, it's a specific backup solution for MDB, and the upgrades online, of course. I'm running out of time here, so no SQL and SQL before, you know, like I say, Python, Ruby, or MySQL as well as JavaScript. We're going through, everything goes through the NDB API, that's the key point here. 
So if I'm writing a C, I just go into the, the data nodes there. This is a, this is a benchmark that um, the, the cluster team did. So you know, take this as uh, an indicator, not a, a real case scenario, because it's not an application, but it's an indicator of how good we can be in cluster. And obviously, it's the, I think the, there's 30 servers. You know, who's got 30 servers lying around? You know, all that memory and everything. But it's an, it's an example of saying, you know, we can get 1.2 billion updates in a minute. They were looking for Celex, and they managed to get updates. So it's, it's not bad. It's, it's pretty powerful. So you download it, configure it, and start the processes, OK? If, you wanna, if anyone wants to test cluster, let me know. I've got a quick, you know, quick guide there. Um, when to consider scalability. Latency, uptime, and application agility, you know, depending on what you're doing. Whatever you do, go here, please. Get the evaluation guide. Look at it. Read it. Sit down with me or whoever's your local you know, MySQL person, and let's go see if it's good for you. If we want to go to the Enterprise Edition of Cluster, it's got everything in the um, previous the MySQL Enterprise Edition with cluster manager and obviously support. So that's a carrier grade. The MySQL cluster manager is just a daemon. It sits in all of the, the, the servers. We've installed our components, OK? And it'll allow us to configure, keep track, uh, migrate, you know, control, alert, and everything. So it's, 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 it makes our life a whole lot easier. If you're starting with MySQL cluster, use a cluster manager. And that's an upgrade scenario. If we didn't have Cluster Manager, this is what we'd be doing on the left-hand side. But on the right, it's Upgrade Cluster. If it fails halfway through, you just run it again until it works. Obviously, if the nodes have gone down, you fix the nodes. But if it's just a standard process, it will start off where it left off. Support. This is obviously you know, enterprise support. Support, sorry, 24-7, 365, 29 languages. It's all MySQL. There's nobody sitting in a garage here. We won't send emails to people, you know, just you know, on a boat somewhere or anything like that. If you want to see the policy, the different types of support, and obviously there's more detail there of the versions and dates, uh, dates and everything you can see. It's like MySQL 8 came out April 2018, therefore five years premium support, uh, extended support three years more. But if you just keep paying support, it's indefinite. Okay, that's for life. But on top of support, you've got consultative or proactive. You may have a doubt, but it's not an issue. But you want to know what, whether, how to do partitioning or how things around performance. Or you're not sure if you need to look at performance, or you just want some checking around how to do some data migration, or whatever, or HA. Ask. It doesn't have to be an issue or a problem. If you want to talk to engineering, they're here. But I'm not seriously. But if you want to sit down and have a conversation about what you're doing with MySQL, let us know. We need to hear from you. You're the community. That helps us push things into future versions, makes our roadmap better, richer, thanks to you. Certified with this Oracle products, questions, doubts, and if you want to see some technical scenarios, MySQL Med, WordPress, that's a blog I use and do different setups and stuff, and that's my email. Any questions, any doubts? Yes. I just wanted to ask about the, the, the backup you described, the enterprise backup. Um, is it like also like really a, a command that I can use equivalent to my SQL dump? Or no. how do I imagine? Or my is it the whole tooling and graphical interface or whatever? No, you, uh, MySQL backup is a command line utility. Um, so literally it's just unzipped wherever you, it's local to the instance. Okay, that's one thing. Okay, and if um, so and it's a, a, a binary backup, so you're taking the data files. It's, MySQL dumped is a logical backup, so two different types of backups there. Okay, so you obviously you can do uh, you can do both. You can say I want to take out a, a backup, a logical backup, just the structure with no data. So I have all my create and you know create uh, commands there. But at the same time, I'm taking a, um, an enterprise backup of my binary data files, and I'm going to move those across, encrypt them and stuff. Okay, so it's basically just like extra uh, backup. Yeah. Okay. The other way around, if I can, if I may, if I may, extra yeah, backups yeah, okay. like my okay. enterprise okay. backup. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 But, But is that that is freely available the enterprise version of that one or not? The, the name says it all. Enterprise backup. You're yes. paying there. You're paying. Okay. And how is the? That I comes mean, with that the goes enterprise. I mean, too much edition. in details, but is this something I buy one time or I buy per instance where I run a 
No. Community but server, for, let's say. You have uh, the enterprise edition is uh, per server subscription per year. Okay. So if you have one server and you have 50 in MySQL communities installed on there, back them all up with Enterprise Edition, use Enterprise Monitor on everything, use all the security you want to on that one server, and you pay one subscription per year. Oh, okay, so it's the old model by server, by physical server that is underneath If you have whatever. virtual machines, talk to us. There's no standard pricing, but we have solutions, okay. and they're very good. Thanks. They'll fit your need, I be to believe me. There's loads, like I say, there's no standard. But if you have four, four uh, virtual servers, then you know it's like, okay, well, they're this size or that size. They don't grow. They're small. Or they're sitting on two physical servers, then do the two physical servers. And you can open up as many virtual machines as you want. Or if you, they're in the cloud, it's like, I don't know where they are. I just need four. It's like, okay, well, we can work with you on that. But yeah, the enterprise backup is a command line. But then if you want to use the graphical user interface, that comes in Workbench, the enterprise edition. But you install that wherever you want. You do an SH tunnel into your server and back it up locally. But it's all included. You want to do encryption. We, part of my job is then to help you use it, to say, okay, well, I've got the enterprise edition, but I'm only using our community binaries. It's like you're wasting half of your investment there. Use it all, you know, encrypt things or, or use security or whatever. It's like I don't need to, I can't, or I can't stop, or, or you know, create a slave in the enterprise edition and migrate off of it if, or into a secure environment. But it's, it's, everything's enterprise. That is basically the same for the monitor. Yep. That I even then fully license, even if I just use it completely with the community editions. Yep. Yep. So financially, it doesn't make really much sense to do so. It's up to you. I mean, so okay. you, like I say, if you have one server with 10 instances, they're all community, use one enterprise monitor on it. You have one subscription, yeah, you can install enterprise monitor wherever you want because it's a repository at the end of the day with a Java Tomcat behind it. And um, you're monitoring all of your instances, your community instances, with one subscription. Okay. Of course, of course. Or you can mix. It's up to you. you know, or migrate them off or just you know, keep community. We, we do understand that people want to stay open source on a lot of servers. Like, okay, I'm using enterprise tooling to monitor, but I don't have to migrate off. Stay with it. Stay with your open source. You're happy with it? Yeah. Why not? It works. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. And if you do have any questions afterwards, send, feel free to send me an email. Obrigado. Thank you, Keith. Thank you.